Hello, it's John Osa, and welcome to this edition of Irrigation Essentials. Now listen, throughout 2009, the first weekend of every month, I've published these videos that speak to making scheduling adjustments in your irrigation controller to incrementally increase the amount of water you're putting in your landscape up from spring up until peak summer, and then incrementally decreasing after peak summer use. That mimics what's called the evapotranspiration bell curve. Now, what I do in the website here is I, I make the science behind this very practical and easy, and our goal is to eliminate water waste in the landscape that comes from scheduling. So I post the schedules, and with these schedules, I've done a lot of the work for you. But the goal is to, to fill the root zone, promote and encourage a deeper root zone, replenish the water that's in that root zone at a 50% depletion, and avoid runoff, avoid deep percolation, the obvious waste of water in the landscape from scheduling. And once you get the hang of it, once you've installed the basic schedule that I've provided, Subsequent adjustments are really pretty easy. You can do it. It's, it's, it's just not that hard. It's, it's amazing. Most people really don't get the most out of the irrigation controller that they have. Now, there are a number of wonderful controllers out there, very easy to use. I've got one right here. This is the Hunter Pro C, is what they call it. And um, it has three programs. That's really the minimum of what you need. Um, now, interestingly enough, we, we did a product review on this product and this controller, and it's published in our website, Irrigation Essentials, and take a look at that. Um, but Hunter has also done something uh, really nice for the consumer in that they've made some very sophisticated uh, science, practical and affordable. There are some bolt-on options for this controller that are very affordable that will actually uh, make it so that this controller will adjust itself according to weather and crop needs. Very sophisticated technology made very simple and affordable. So check that out. That's if you don't want to go through the, the exercise that we do once a month here, which is, I believe, simple in and of itself. Now listen, we've talked about, what we're talking about here is really eliminating waste from scheduling. Um, and my schedules um, help you get there, but there's two other ways I want to touch on um, that, you, that you typically um, water is wasted in the landscape. And the first is through lack of system maintenance. I can't stress enough the importance of simply inspecting and verifying that the hardware you have in your landscape, and that would be the spray heads, the rotors, the emitters, that they're functioning like they're supposed to, that they're not um, uh, misaligned or too low or, or clogged or broken. So fix the broken stuff. Go look. Once a month, inspect your system and fix, fix, fix whatever's broken. The second thing is pressure and spacing. Um, all of the different types of hardware have an optimum pressure, operating pressure, so confirm that you have that and spacing. There's no way around it. If you do not have the spacing that's appropriate for your hardware, you have built-in inefficiency. So you might want to confirm that, that you've got those things going because those are the three areas. Scheduling, system maintenance, pressure and spacing. Those are all the opportunities to really make your landscape water use efficient. Now, listen, I'm, I'm, I've got a quick tip for you. There's an awesome tool that always tells the truth. It's extremely helpful, very easy to use, and I'm going to show you one right now. It's called a soil probe. Now this is not a complex piece of equipment as you can see. It's simply inserted into the ground, it's spun around, and you get a core of soil that tells you several things. One is, is soil type is obvious. Um, your root depth and how much water is in that soil in relation to the root depth is critical information and made perfectly clear with a soil probe. So get one. 
They're inexpensive. Go to an irrigation supply house, uh, and in my FAQs in the website, uh, at the end of each one, there's, there's a reference to a supply house near you. So uh, there's that, but also in the links portion of Irrigation Essentials, my website, um, I have links to some mail order houses where you can contact them directly and have it sent directly to your house. It's a great tool. Now listen, let's wrap up here. I'd like to suggest that you take a look at a couple of the previous videos that I've posted specific to scheduling. I've come at some of the technical pieces of the topic from different ways and it will help build your awareness. It doesn't take long. These videos are just six, seven minutes long at the most. Um, and they provide that practical advice for a technical subject. And lastly, if you haven't already, uh, please take a look at the specific irrigation schedules that I've posted for 14 of the major population centers across uh, the Sunbelt states of the continental United States. Now the schedules, they look like this. You can download it if you choose. And for example, I have it broken out by program A, B, and C. Program A are shallow rooted crops such as turf and annuals, annual flowers. Program B, low shrubs and ground covers. Program C, uh, large shrubs and trees. And I have specific schedules for each crop type and also related to the, the primary types of hardware out there. So if you have spray heads or you have rotors, all of that's addressed and it's set up in a nice, clear, simple, logical way that allows you to get a good base schedule and then make it very easy to adjust as we go through the year. That's the hope. Anyway, Listen, thank you for watching, and tune in again the uh, first weekend in October, and I will catch up with you then. All right, thank you. Bye.